So Rave Dubin was asked a pretty good question uh, by a very perceptive young lad. I believe his name is Evan. And um, yours truly came up. Let's take a look at how Rave Dubin responds. So I've been watching your program since about like early time in high school. Now I'm in college, so it's been a while. But um, one thing that I really liked, uh, something that you talked about here was the difference between uh, diversity of thought and uh, diversity of identity. Sure. Now the thing with a diversity of thought is I feel like that's a problem you actually perpetuate on your show because the only time you really have left-wing guests are when they're members of the intellectual dark web such as Harris or Weinstein and they're only there for the bulk of the time to uh, talk about the regressive left. And so I pretty much wanted to ask you, why won't you have Sam or Sam Cedar on? Yeah, uh, he's recording it too. Okay. Yeah, I mean the guy's just he's just a dishonest player who's just lied about me repeatedly, like I'm not gonna do it. So would you be willing to have Natalie Wynn of ContraPoints or David Pakman or Kyle Kalinsky? All of these are progressives who yeah, have I'm not in principle I'm not against having any of them, but I'm not gonna have people that attack me personally. I think it's pretty obvious if you watch what I did up here. Like I don't attack people personally, I'm happy to talk about ideas. You're going to go after me personally, you're going to lie about me and slander me and things like that. Like, it's just not the game I'm playing. There's no winning it for me. You know, I have a certain set of rules when it comes to talking to people and how I sort of behave as a public person. And if you don't have rules, like, I'm just not that interested. But, but also, I think your premise is actually wrong. If you were to look, and someone did break this down on Facebook, I don't know how many shows I've done, maybe 500 interviews, something like that. Most of my guests actually either were lefties or are lefties to some extent. So it's like, you can say, well, Harris and Brent Weinstein, who considers himself deeply progressive, who was a professor at Evergreen State, the most lefty college in the United States. You could say, well, he's not a progressive anymore. Well, if he's not a progressive anymore, it's not because he moved, actually. It's because the left went bananas. Dude, who are you fooling at this point, Dave? Who are you fooling at this point? Listen, man, the point is rather obvious. The point is, when was the last time you had a conversation with a lefty and spoke about left ideas? Please, send me the video. When was the last time Rave Dubin debated Medicare for All? When did he debate free college with a lefty? When did he debate a living wage with a lefty? When did he debate ending the wars with a lefty or a new New Deal or a Green New Deal or the utility of unions or discussed worker-owned co-ops? The thing is, you... It's false advertising, Dave. So you act like, me, bro? I'm all about free speech and the battle of ideas. And then your show is nothing but a safe space for conservative thought. Now, listen, is there something wrong in principle with being a safe space for conservative thought? No, there's not. But you have to be honest about it, and you're not honest about it. Drop the whole, like, I'm all about free speech and the battle of ideas, and I love just discussing these ideas, bro. You don't get to say that if you don't actually discuss the ideas that disagree with your narrative, and you don't discuss those ideas. The lefties who you have on, and I'm being kind and conceding that, yeah, oh yeah, they're lefties, sure. The topic is, like Evan pointed out there, you you talk to them about how shitty the left is. You have on lefties who shit on the left. Wow! How bold and how brave and how strong of you to directly take on left-wing ideas in this battle of ideas. Fine, you know what? Don't have on any of the people that he listed. Fine. Invite, you know, Professor Richard Wolf on. He's a, a, a fucking brilliant guy on economics, and he's a lefty, <laughs> so you want to have that discussion? Like, I really hate this notion of, like, we're just the brave truth-tellers, and, uh, you know, we host outsider opinions here. Does it cut both ways? Did you have, I don't know, somebody who represents, like, Malcolm X philosophy of black identitarianism? If you really want to have, ed you know, edgy, fringe ideas, why not have... You know, a new Black Panther who can actually make the case in a strong, coherent way. And I don't I don't even agree with them, but f to fucking have them if you're going to be the edgy outsider truth teller guys and we allow all ideas here, bro. All right. Why not have a, a flat out Marxist come make the case? Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't you do that?
Because again, it's not, it, it's marketing, it's branding. The marketing is, I'm all about the, the battle of ideas, I'm all about free speech, and then ultimately it just becomes a safe space for conservative thought, and then the perception becomes, oh, well, these are the edgy outsiders, the ones who always happen to agree with conservative thought. And that's just not true. <laughs> that's not even close to true. In fact, the bulk of systemic resistance is against left-wing thought. Why? Because it actually threatens power. You don't think it threatens the powerful when you talk about a living wage? When you talk about a right to a union, which would guarantee workers get paid more? That's exactly the opposite of what management wants, what the elite wants. I mean, that would actually hurt the bottom line of the top 1%. So they will resist that come hell or high water. When you talk about Medicare for all, you want to talk about an edgy idea? How about it would totally destroy the way our healthcare system is currently uh, set up? And it would get rid of that for-profit, unnecessary, rapacious, mafia-like middleman that has literal death panels and determines who lives or dies. Because that's what the middleman does. That's what for-profit health insurance companies do. Hey, uh, you, you know, I'm not going to cover uh, your cancer treatment, or I am going to cover it, but you have a $7,500 deductible first. got to pay that out of pocket. Well, I can't afford that. Oh, well, that's too bad for you now, isn't it? These are the real subversive ideas that question power, and you don't have that debate with anybody on the left. You don't have that discussion with anybody on the left. Again, fine, you don't want to talk to any of the people he laid out, which, by the way, LOL, that's pretty fucking hilarious. He gave you a list of, like, fucking four people. Like, no, I, I'm not against talking to them in principle, it's just that, uh, what did he say? They're dishonest players? Or, I don't know if he was talking specifically about Cedar, or talking about all of us there, but... This is the oldest trick in the book, man. You know, anybody who disagrees with me, who has rigorously criticized me, you're just a dishonest player. You're just a liar. You're just a smear merchant. Well, so much for, you know, being a big time believer in free speech. <laughs> I believe in free speech unless I don't like the nature of the criticism against me, in which case then I no longer believe in free speech. It's like when I threatened to sue people who wrote an article who referred to me as conservative. I'm not making that up. Mr. Free Speech himself did that. Somebody wrote an article basically saying, like, Dave Rubin's a conservative. And he, he like, posted on Twitter the, the textbook definition of fucking libel or slander or some shit. And he was like, you know, you better take it down. What happened to free speech, big guy? What happened to free speech? It's not libelous or slanderous to say, I think you're conservative based on your publicly, you know, espoused political positions. Now, you could say, I just agree with that. I'm a classical liberal or whatever the fuck you say these days. But they're allowed to have the opinion that you're conservative. Even if you say that it's factually wrong, they're allowed to say it. that's not fucking libel or slander or any nonsense like that. I mean, come on, man. It's, it's a joke. He's a joke at this point. And again, you don't want to talk to any of the people named fine. Invite on David Dole, the Rational National. Invite back on Jimmy Dore. You had him on a long, long time ago, back before you totally lost your mind. Um, invite on uh, Humanist Report, Mike Figueredo. Do that. But the reality of the situation is, and make no mistake about it, the reason why he won't have a conversation with Sam Cedar is because Sam Cedar has made Dave Rubin a punching bag on his show. Not illegitimately. In fact, the, the heart of the criticism always comes back to substance. Comes back to, hey, here's a silly thing you said, and I'm going to correct it because what you said is really silly. That's always the heart of it. Dave's characterization of that is, they're dishonest, they're smear merchants. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. And listen, when people, you know, maybe end up calling you names... When they, for example, watch that clip of you and Joe Rogan going back and forth and you're arguing against building codes. Have you considered maybe it's deserved? <laughs> I mean, I've called myself sometimes on, on air like I'm a jackass or I'm an idiot. Or, I was wrong about that. I fucked that up. You want to know why? Because I'm intellectually honest. You have to ask yourself why you run for a safe space and you melt like a snowflake at the first sign. Of disagreement. So just listen. All I'm saying is come as advertised, bro. You, you can't say you're the... I'm all about the exchange of ideas and freedom of speech. And you have on nobody from the left to debate actual left ideas. Medicare for all, free college, living wage, ending the wars, new new deal, green new deal. None of that stuff. None of it. Unions, none of it. Worker-owned co-ops. 
It's hilarious. I mean, it really is hilarious. But people, but see, that's the thing, Dave. You don't even realize it, but your grift is imploding on you because everybody's seeing through it. You know, you have any idea how many times I've seen comments like, I used to be a fan of Dave Rubin, and then, you know, fast forward a couple months, and I'm like, what the fuck? Is, what, what, is, what is he doing? What is he saying? I mean, this is just ridiculous. And I think it speaks for itself pretty clearly when Evan laid out a list of, who did he say? He said, um, ContraPoints. Who else did he say? He said, uh, Sam Cedar, ContraPoints, Kyle Klinsky, David Pakman. <laughs> we know why he doesn't want to talk to David Pakman, right? For those of you who haven't seen it, go see it. There's an old discussion of from, I don't know, a year and a half ago, maybe. Dave Rubin and, and uh, David Pakman. And Dave Rubin asked some basic policy questions. Hey, what's your take on healthcare? You've said you're for Medicare for all, but then you say, like, you've said other things that kind of show you're not so what what's your position and dave's response is <laughs> pretty sure he has no idea what medicare for all is and pretty sure he has no idea even what obamacare is because he's spoken out against obamacare and then when he goes on to lay out his idea of a perfect uh, policy proposal on health care it's obamacare So that's why he doesn't want to talk to those guys. It's got nothing to do with, oh my God, they're all smear merchants or they're all liars or they're dishonest actors. Oh, please. Oh, please. All, literally, all we talk about on this show is policy. Sure, I fuck around and have fun with it too, of course. But we are fucking po loaded with policy up to our eyeballs on this show. Okay? So you can't say, oh, they're dishonest. They're not talking about like serious issues. Oh, please. So I think it says a lot when he laid out like a bunch of different lefties and Dave's like... Pfft. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I'm all about this battle of ideas, which is why I invite on lefties to bash the left nonstop. Like, the tap dance is getting old and silly. We get it. We get it. Oh, I have had on lefties. Look at this ridiculous breakdown of the policy positions of all the people who come on my shows. You never talk about the actual left issues, though. And to the extent you do, you just bash them all day long. My social justice warriors are so bad and dumb. Wow, congratulations. What a bold claim, Dave. Wow, a fucking emotionally unstable college kid with pink hair turns out is not the brightest in the room. Whoa, wow, incredible thought, man. Well done. That's not the most obvious fucking thing ever that we could have gotten out of the way in about two seconds. But it all comes back to that. It all comes back to, you know, left bad, social justice warriors bad. Let me not engage with any lefties on actual left policy issues. And still pretend like I'm the battle of ideas guy and the free speech guy. Save it, dude. Save it. And again, even if you don't want to talk to any of the people he listed there, I can give you a list of fucking 20 people. You know? People I agree with on a lot of things or maybe even disagree with on a lot of things. You know, I, I told you David Dole, uh, Michael Figueredo, Benjamin Dixon, Michael Brooks whatever, the list goes on and on. Nico House, the list goes on and on and on. And none of them have been on the show to discuss actual left ideas. Ask yourself what that says about a man named Rave Dubin.